Hello everybody, Mr Facto to me here. A while back I did a video on making me split axle boxes. I went uh, a little bit off a uh, uh, design on drawing and I made these split axle boxes. Uh, you can see all that in a separate video. But in the axle box itself I put a I put an oil groove. I'll just I'll just zoom in a little bit to that. You can probably see it there. I put this oil groove in the axle boxes. Uh, and my idea is is to once the axles are fitted, I'm doing an end, end feed oil system to save me having to fumble around inside when the boiler's on inside here to get to my axle boxes to oil them. So my idea was to put this end feed oil system in and then the oil will go straight up my axle into that oil groove in the axle box. So I've now done that and what I've it's pretty pretty basic really. I'll just have to zoom out a bit of fraction I think. Yeah, here we are. I've I've drilled up the axle on each end with a one eighth hole, the same as the uh, size of the groove in the axle box. Then I've measured from the end of my axle to determine the centre of the of the axle box exactly, and then I've drilled a hole up that up the axle on each axle. And then I drilled a cross hole into the hole up the axle exactly in that position where that groove is. Now when you Right, so there you go, there's the wheels in position. Everything's cut to length now, the axles are cut to length, so it's all in, in the relative position where it's going to be. But just for clearance on the wheels there's a little bit of end float can you see that on video and each side the end float on each side up to the axle box itself is about a 30 second on each side now you've got to have that little bit of end float apparently uh, so that when you're going round corners your wheels are uh, not going to bind. They're, they're able to just, to just to give that fraction. So the reason I'm telling you that is when you've drilled your your cross hole in. Obviously, when that's dead in line with the hole in the centre, sorry, the groove in the centre of the axle box, and the axle box is has got a ten, tendon, tendency to want to be able to move a, th a sixteenth overall on that plane it's going to slightly go out of line with the groove and you may only get perhaps a third of the hole in the groove well I could have put a bigger hole in I suppose but what I've done I've just countersunk each hole a, approximately twice the diameter of the hole so that when it does move, the the oil is still going to get to the to the axle box if it's not quite in line. So what I've done, I've ordered these little oil nipples from China. I was going to make some, but I'm going to be, be honest with you. I got a bag of twenty, and they only cost me one pound one pound seventy. That's including the postage I mean they've probably worked out at, at, at pennies it would have cost me more to buy the the balls and the bit of brass and the, and the springs it would have cost me more to make six than it was was to buy 20 so I've been waiting for them coming from China but I've got one fitted now and uh, what I've done I've counterboard the end of the axle uh, six millimeter diameter 
by a six milli six millimeter depth for the exact size of these oil nipples, spring loaded oil nipples. And I've got one fitted now. And uh, I've had a test run and it works fine. You just you all I'm gonna have to do then is I might want a smaller oil can, that's all. You just put your oil can on, on that ball, press your oil can up to it, and then uh, pump away. And you can see, see it's pumping oil straight through. Now I've made a mess on my, my bench now doing that. Should have had a bit of cloth down to start, we shouldn't have, but never mind. Next job. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on my next video. Bye for now then.